Do you know what the most underestimated aspect of a usability engineer is? It's the mindset. Let's talk about what defines a successful usability engineer. Hi, I am Michaela Kauer-Franz, and I am a usability engineer myself and the founder of Custom Medical, a usability engineering company for medical devices. This video is from my online course, Introduction to Usability Engineering and IEC 62366-1, and you can find it on medicaldevicehq.com slash usability engineering. Before we jump into it, click the subscribe and notification buttons for more content just like this. And if you want to stay updated on upcoming courses and premium content, don't forget to follow Medical Device HQ on LinkedIn. You'll find the link in the description below. I would like to talk to you about one of the most underestimated aspects for usability engineering, and that's the mindset. I think, as for most professions, you will be able to identify a successful usability engineer by his or her mindset. What do I mean by that? A successful usability engineer has a certain kind of attitude with which they approach a task. And the core attitude I'm talking about is the ability to accept that great usability engineering needs two or probably even three different kind of experts. One kind of expert is the usability engineer themselves. The other kind of expert is the user. And if we are talking about a third sort of export, we are talking about the technical expert. But let's focus on the first two kinds for the beginning. In most professions, you are taught that you are the expert in your field. You know how to build the device, you know how to calculate the static of the building, you know which medicine is best for which kind of illness, and you know what kind of fertilizer is needed for the special plant. That's what being an export is all about, knowing what's best for the case being. For usability engineering, this is only partially true. Yes, you are an expert, but a very special kind of expert. I would call a usability engineer a process expert. So what is a process expert? A process expert is someone who knows the way, who knows what are the best steps to take and how to move from one step to the next one. A process expert might also be an expert on a specific matter, but he doesn't have to be. And do you know why you don't need to be a specific matter expert? Because you have the second kind of expert, your users. In my opinion, your users are the subject matter experts. They know their tasks, they know their environments, they know the organizational borders they have to stick to, and they know about the explicit and implicit social rules, and they know what they need. Users know the progress they are longing for. They know the goal and the destination, but they don't know the way. And that's why the usability engineer and the user make such a great couple. Because one of you is the expert for the content and the other one is the expert for the way. So what does this mean? In general, it simply means that you need those kind of experts to design a great device. The subject matter expertise from your user and your expertise about the way. And because you need both experts, it's essential that you work at an eye level together. That doesn't mean that you need to reassure each and every step together with the users, but it means that you take the input seriously. It is your task to build an environment of trust that enables your users to really show you what's important for them. And to enable this environment of trust, you need to show them respect. You need to show your sense of interest in what they have to say. And it is of tremendous importance that you do not to try to explain and sell your solution, but instead try to understand what is important for them. If you're a good usability engineer and you are in contact with the user, I would expect that about 80% of the time, the user is talking and you are listening. If I was asked to make up rules for user researchers and usability engineers, I would tell you the following rules. First, be respectful. Second, be interested. And third, be neutral. Being respectful means that you listen to the user, that you don't try to convince him or her of a different point of view, that you don't start arguing with him or her, but you listen. 
And because you're intruding into a very personal field, independent of it being in the work or home situation, it is important that you're polite and behave like a guest. And I mean that sort of a guest that you would happily reinvite. Be interested means that you need to ask a lot of questions. And those questions should help you to understand the situation and the view of your users. Those questions should be open and non-guiding, and you should ask a lot. Often people tend to think they know what their conversational partner thinking, but I can assure you, often you won't. Let me tell you one example where that became very clear to me. I conducted interviews with the car owners, and we were talking about the question, what makes a car desirable? One of the participants I'm talking to told me that his former car broke down up to three times a week in the end, and he had to repair it in his own garage every time. And then he, together with his family, had decided to exchange the car for a new one. You know, I felt a lot of pity for him because I could easily imagine how much work that must have been. But because one of the rules of being a good user researcher is not to anticipate how the person feels, I asked him about it instead. So I went on by asking, so how did you feel when your car broke down three times a week? And you know what he was saying? He said, oh, you know, I really loved the car. You know, I'm so sad that I had to exchange it for a new one. You know, I have three kids and repairing this car three times a week, it was my only possibility to get some time for myself. And that story also leads me to the last rule, be neutral. I am a mother of three kids too, and I would hate it if my husband kept a broken car just to be able to run away from the family three times a week. But being a user researcher and being a usability engineer is not about you, and it's not about me, but it's about the user and his or her needs. And therefore, it doesn't matter if you wouldn't like it. And it's important that you doesn't bring in your own judgment and your own assessment of the situation. Because if you do, you will change the reaction of your interview partner. And this will lead to false results. You will either discuss stuff that is not that relevant for a user because he sees you're being engaged in the topic, or he will turn away from a certain topic or not talk to you openly anymore because he or she feels that you're disappointed by the answers. So, Keep in mind that it needs to have two experts to be successful, three if you think about bringing the device to real life, and that all the experts need to be treated with respect, interest, and scientific neutrality. If you stick to these rules, there's little that could go wrong. I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more about usability engineering, check out my online course, Introduction to Usability Engineering for Medical Devices and IEC 62366-1 on medicaldevicehq.com. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic, so drop a comment below. Thanks for watching.